we're going to jump right back into it where we were, but just a quick recap. Um, our party here has uh, ventured into this ruin, um, being told that they need to recover something known as an astral lens, and in exchange, they will earn their freedom. Uh, they have met a wanderer, we may say, of this ruin, a person who uh, referred to himself as Dusty Pete, who gave <laughs> off some kind of very sketchy vibes, uh, which Alpha Dean's character, Solo Down, has pretty much gathered this guy's trouble. Um, dangerous, probably even. Um, but we last left off with the party um, communicating with this very strange marger who is uh, uh, amidst these the this tower of machines in this cave, in this ruin. Uh, this marger's face is filled with eyes and it speaks in these very cryptic things. The party knows that they have to probably go through an area Dusty Pete had mentioned that apparently there's a forest somehow in this ruin. And the marger has said that it would open the passageway to this place provided the party goes down and saves them who they are and where further down is where part two is going to uh, uh, investigate. So I open it up to you guys again. Like I said, I'm gonna, you know, weasel my way back through the crevice and, uh, you know, uh, hit back the way we came because uh, like you said, uh, campfires and so on and so forth, I'm thinking that's them I squeeze by, follow his lead for sure. And I follow him through the crevice. Um, I definitely tell Kokan, hey, come on, man, gotta do this. So you're gonna go back the way you came? Yes. I would, uh, I'm definitely gonna follow him, but I'm gonna take a couple of minutes to like view the landscape again. And um, yeah. I, I'll, I'll look at this creature that's connected to this device and I'll say, uh, I'll see you again in another illusion. Yes. And I'll, then I'll slowly follow them back out. So where are you guys going to go? Are you going to go kind of back down the way you came from, how you entered this? Or are you going to go back to that room where Dusty Pete is? Oh, I think we should just head our way. You know, I'm going to leave Pete to his own devices. Now, if I see him again, that's a different story. <laughs> Yeah, I follow Solo, knew what he's talking about. He's the one who said he saw a campfire. Definitely in the case there could be people down there. It's a down there, so it makes sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll also follow. I guess I'm the, the last. I'm in the back. So are you going to go to where the bridge had snapped? Yep. Yes. So you guys get there very easily. Um, and you are standing looking down into this canyon. Um, and it, it, this is, this is a steep, uh, uh, drop, like I said, three, 400 feet, maybe. Um, uh, question. Yes. Um, when the rope ladder broke, what side did the majority of it drop to, you know, on what side is, you know, the, the hanging portion, as you said, one of the lines. Yeah. Broke. So, so the one you guys are standing on, there is a longer portion of the bridge hanging down most of the bridge actually on the other side from where you came there's like maybe a foot and a half two feet at the most of rope uh rope bridge and how far down does that hang for us um that hangs down about 17 or 18 feet okay so the chasm was only that wide okay I, I will walk to the edge as i'm seeing solo down like you know analyzing the situation and I'll like look down and I'll look at him and and I'll say, do you want me to resurrect the ladder for you? Mm, no, we need to get down there. That is quite a long job. So I'm looking for my character. Um, I'm going to attempt because it says, I don't know if you read adaptation, um, Claire, but basically it said I can uh, push the adaptation to, you know, in extreme environments, you know, you can increase the cost, but I'm thinking maybe if I can just push my adaptation where, you know, I'm more adapted to 
climbing down the walls because those two those two guys can basically get down on their own accord yes let's see um i would be okay with um i you know actually i think to activate it um we're gonna leave the cost the same and i'll say that climbing down um with adaptation is going to be a level four task all right and i guess i'll spend a level of effort to bring it down to a level three but and before you actually descend um i see you getting ready to do this right how, how does it look when you're getting ready to do this basically you see me again that that same that same idiom you see me do those little weird hand motions and then you see this almost like I said, like this translucent holographic image of me, but it's like a hazy, it was, it's in color, but you just see that my hands look, uh, they look like they might have like hooks on them or claws, you know, I'm more adapted to what it looks like to moving, you know, in this type of environment. Gotcha. So what, what I would have done is seeing him getting ready, I also get ready to climb. Mm -hmm. I reach into my pouch for a couple of units of, um, what is it, IO or IOTAM uh, for uh, using my ability, right tool for the job. Oh, great. Because I can, um, if, it's, if I have at least one unit of IOTAM, and yep. I want to do this for me and for uh, Kokan. Um, you do, yeah, have, you uh, do have wings, uh, though. My, my float, first, just so you guys know, I can't float down. Hover doesn't allow me to go down. Hover is only up or forward. All right. So what you call again? I, I am still going to craft this for you. And I, and I know you mentioned the wings, but uh, Void Wings says like it lets me fly one round for as quickly as I can move, and I don't want to burn a ton of ink going four hundred feet. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I rather just craft the you know uh, a usable like I don't know hand something. It says I can craft. A uh, temporary device uh, provides a physical uh, an asset to physical non-combat task identified mm -hmm. ahead of time. Um, and it's like, for example, if you need to climb a wall, you could create some sort of climbing assistance device. So I guess in this case, I could like fashion some sort of suction thing for the hands or something of that nature that makes it easier to like grip onto ledges or something. Like I make gloves or something of that nature, um, if you'll allow it. Yeah, no, I will absolutely allow that. Um, and again, since seeing I see uh, Solo, he looks like he's handled his hands and basically claws at this moment. Um, I actually use that as inspiration and craft something similar. So like, um, what does it go? Ken and I both have something like claws and I'll use the ability twice. Um, okay. And yeah, you see, like I said, I got climbing claws. I've got, you know, my body just seems to have adapted a little bit. My, my arms might seem a little longer you know my feet same thing you know i get you know even like it, i'm just adapted to this you know like i said you see me just step into the image and that's what i look like now and how much Excellent. io am i using for this uh it's one unit of iodum to fashion that that particular device so per device so if you're going to make two of these suction cups um i'll count the pair as as the device um so yeah. two units two units of whichever iodum it, it doesn't matter i'll just use my standard generic down to four now okay all right yeah so i hand you i go to uh, uh, cocaine you see i i go into my bag i guess a uh, solo season too if he looks i i whip out a couple of small pieces of metal and um synth and other technology like you maybe I mean, you might understand it because you know Numenera it might be something you've seen before but I fashion it together very quickly I make little hand claw things and they look very similar to what Solo has on his hands at the moment I hand you a set of them so as I said the walls of this canyon are filled with various machines so um, at a minimum it would be a level 4 task um, uh, Solo Down has reduced his task down to level three um, uh, by spending effort. Um, the two of you can lower it also down to three. Um, I will also say that you all have ropes. Um, and if you would like to use those, um, you could bring this down to a, a level two task for all of you. All right, so go ahead. I said that works. All right, and if that's the case, um, is this might speed or intellect? Um, 
You know, given the nature of what this is, I'm going to leave that up to your discretion, whether you feel that you are putting more of your physical might into this task or you are relying on your dexterity. I'm comfortable with this coming out of might or speed. Gotcha. All right. So in that case, I will um, use, I will go with speed mm-hmm. and I'm going to use two levels of effort to make it free or, you know, it sounds you're down just, there and I just climb. You see, you basically see um, just to flavor a little bit. I almost slide down this machinery and the shadow is kind of guiding me. It's like it's on the face of the thing I'm sliding down and kind of guiding me and I might chip away at like bits that might hold me back and just slide all the way down. Um, when he handed me the device, I look at it and I go, fascinating, truly designed, but seems that it would be effective. And also, I'm not rolling, I'm not adding anything. I'm just gonna attempt to do it straight up. Yeah, you just need to hit a six on the die. I got a 17 on the die. Then you are good. You make it all the way down there. Um, remember, I said we're gonna put a pin in that GM intrusion, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, we're, we're gonna come back to that in just a moment here, though. Uh, Dean. I mean, yeah. Oh, perfect. I wrote a seven, so I'm glad we did it. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. Basically, basically, you guys see me kind of spider climb down, and it's like really, instead of, you know, climbing, you know, backwards like most people would, he literally goes forward and skitters down like a, you know, like a human spider. Love it. So, um, just for some terms of direction, uh, the the campfire you thought you saw, Solo, we're gonna say that is north. Okay. Where you guys came from, uh, you came from the, well, you entered the ruin from the west. And so you were traveling east as you went further into the ruin. Our good friend Coco, um, you are about to make it down, and I'll 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 I'll, I'll guarantee your safety with this. You're not going to take any damage from this, but you do stumble and trip, and you fall a little bit, and you fall into something that feels very wet. As I, you know, the impact of hitting the ground. I kind of like lay there on my back and you know, the, the impact, you guys see like a rainbow cascade on all the wounds on my head, like almost like a line of colors. And I look up, you know, like I just lift my head up and look at the rest of the people and go, is this liquid or water I am laying in? You see that he's uh, he's got a bunch of red stuff on him. It looks like blood. Mm-hmm. And as a matter of fact, you fell onto a body. I'm assuming there was a very loud and unpleasant noise as that happened. That kind of plopping sound that you might expect. No. As soon as that happens, I look over to the you know where he landed. Um, do I just see him covered in blood and maybe whatever might have come from the dead body or body? Um, but I walk over and see if he's okay. I try to get him to his feet. You know, I reach out a hand. I do not take it, and I, and I go, I am fine. Maybe the person I land on will require your assistance. I look down. Um, I See? hate to break it to you. I don't think you made it. So, do you look at the body? Yes. Yeah. This body is ghastly pale. Um, it's thoroughly dead. It's not moving. Um, it has incredibly long fingers uh, that, that turn into nails at the end. But perhaps what is most notable about this is that its entire head is covered in mouths. Hmm. And no actually, eyes. there's no eyes, um, just mouths. Um, and blood is coming out of some of the mouths. It's begun to pool around this creature. Hmm. Uh, Jack definitely looks disturbed. He steps away a little bit. Um, Solo, uh, uh, Coco, have you ever seen anything like this? I don't think so. Should I make an intelligence check? Go ahead, yeah. 
I'll make one as well. Also, while while the guys are talking, I'm using heads magic. You see the same, you know, that same um, like metal shards I have. I, I put my hand in and it follows my fingers and I fling it up in the air and all the blood, as it starts cascading down, it cleans me. I'm using hedge mass- magic. It's good use of hedge magic. Yeah, basically just to clean myself off. So um, I wrote a uh, nine. I got a 12 on, 12 on the die roll. Uh, neither the nine or the 12 are enough for you to really identify what this is. Okay. Well, um, can I have made a roll too, or yeah, I'm looking ahead. along with them? <laughs> you know, I've been using points. I'm going to go okay. ahead and use my uh, action recovery roll. Yep. Beautiful. I get back seven. Fantastic. Being your first recovery roll, that's one action. So the next would be ten minutes, yeah. and then as they go on. Well, uh, actually, is it okay if I do the same? As a, I see, what do you, what does it look like when you do that, Dean? Um. Again, it's that he does it, you know, he changes his hand and he moves his hand this way and that way. And it's always these weird, like, images of himself. But this time, this image looks as if it's green and it's vibrant, you know. And as he steps into it, it turns gold and dissipates. And he's, he goes, ah, yeah, feel better, you know. I had seen that. I, you know, as you see, you're refreshing yourself. I reach into my pouch and just whip out a small, like, I don't, like, a, little vial of liquid with droppers. I started dropping into like any wounds I might have or I put some on my tongue. It's basically to energize me to take my recovery roll. So I have two, so four total. I'm dropping it all into my speed. And that's my one action recovery down to 10. You rolled a two on the die? Yes, I did. So you get four? Yeah, mm-hmm. I added, added all four to speed. Oh, okay. Did you also want to try to roll to identify this creature? Oh, oh yeah, I rolled a 12. I, I said that before. Oh, okay, I missed uh, that. The recovery. Yeah, but yeah, um, I, I was like, I, I laughed a 12, haha, because I know it's lower than... Yeah, yeah. None, of, no, none of y'all are particularly sure what this is. Well, all I know is that it's dead. It requires so many mouths. Perhaps he's hungry. All I know is it's dead. Has nothing to do with the lens, the astral lens. Let's keep moving. What do we see when we look around? A uh, lot of rubble. Um, you see, it's probably evident that, as I said, the the walls of this canyon are lined with various machines that are hanging out, and it looks like probably many of them have fallen out and crashed. So there's there's you know jagged edges of metal. There's cables strewn about. Um, I'm I'm not going to say that there's anything here that's impeding movement. Um, but is sort of obscuring sight to a degree. The only the only thing I want to do um, is, if possible, see if I can identify the cause of death if Anthony's oh, fall yes. and destroyed it. Oh yeah, I, I still haven't left the body either. When he said, uh, "What's look?" I'm still like talking aloud. Like perhaps it needs it needs those mouths to communicate to multiple people at once. Perhaps, and. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to identify the cause of death. Yeah, go ahead and make me a roll. Sixteen. So um, this is it, this is fairly easy to spot. There is a giant wound in the center of this creature's chest. Um, looks like something had punctured it. Does it look like a something blasted it or does it look like it's like a a, a spear or a something? spear um and i'm gonna say probably a very crude weapon at that um bits of the flesh are kind of torn in jagged ways that suggest that maybe parts of it were not fully sharpened or were too sharp in certain ways gotcha hmm. no that looks horrible i just kind of kind of look around and see if i see you said you there were bits of machinery. I just want to make sure there's no blood on any of the, you know, r- you know, close by areas, any of the machine p- parts or anything, you know, make just me, to be aware. Yeah, make me a perception roll. 16. Nice. So you start looking around and you actually see the floor of the canyon. You see smears of blood heading north. Oh, just right. Great. The direction we got to go. Funny how that works. 
Uh, oh, I look around and I look where this thing is laying. I'm going to check it like near its feet. Do I see anything that might look like a pressure plate or anything along that lines? Nope. You know? Okay. <sighs> all right, guys. Well, we have to go that way, and it looks like blood's all over the place. That is very object. I mean, very ob- observant of you. Yeah. If they're not, if I, there's, oh, god. I was just gonna look at Coco and go. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> it's my. If they're staying near the body, I definitely turn to them because I definitely walk maybe 10, 15 feet away to survey the area. Well, as I mentioned, I looked around. I turned to them and said, guys, if we don't keep moving, we're going to end up like that thing. And I, I, you said we had to go north, right? Did you say that out loud? Um, What is it? Solo? That yeah, that's the direction I, yeah, we have to go. Yeah, so I, 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 then I have, I'm already heading in that direction 10, 15 feet as I turn to y'all. I go, well, technically... If we look at the trail of blood, perhaps staying still was the best option because this creature seems to have been moving. Not to contradict what you're saying, of course. But if we stay still, then we go nowhere. We find no lens and we end up here like Pete. Drag just literally just points at a solo. After and, I start start following, and I start following Drag. I go, well, there lies the illusion. I say under my breath as I follow you. <laughs> um, so as you guys head north, a particularly disturbing sight um, unfolds. You see the bodies of perhaps a dozen marger um, viciously cut up um, and arranged in a empty patch of ground in a very, it almost looks like a, um, a symbol or lettering that you don't know. It looks like bodies were uh, moved about with a kind of intentionality and precision. Also among these bodies, you see another one of those creatures with the mouths uh, uh, on its head. It too is laying there uh, dead with a, another puncture uh, uh, wound in its chest. Are the Marger dead with puncture wounds as well? No. The Marger look like they were, um, many look like they had their throats cut, um, uh, and there's all sorts of other wounds on them as well. Are there any spears lying around these Margers? Make me a perception check. Oh, get out of here, D6. Uh, I, rolled, I rolled an 11, but I'm trained at it. Okay, and you got a 14, you said? Mm-hmm. Hey, we're all okay. the same, basically. Um, you don't see any spears. All right. Hmm. Um, you said that they were laying in a particular fashion, like almost like placed, right? Yep, the marger look like they have been arranged in either like, like symbols or lettering. All right, so can I do a perception roll? But I want to look, since I'm assuming that there's blood scattered all over the place. Oh, yeah. Um, are there any footprints or markings that do not seem to come from the, like I'm gonna analyze the feet and hands of these bodies and to see if there's any sort of difference, like shoe prints or something other than these actual creatures. Sure. I got a 19 on the die roll. Ooh, I'm, okay, great. I'm trained in perception. You, um... The, the creatures with mouths are not wearing shoes. Um, they have, they're walking around barefoot, it would seem. Um, the marger have a mix of um, uh, feet and hooves. Um, none of them are wearing shoes either. The feet are distinct enough from the uh, dead creatures with the mouths on its head. Um, you spot footprints that trail off to the north. They look like hooves. I, I, like, survey the area, and then I walk back to the group. I go, these poor creatures obviously were slain. I, I don't think that is up for discussion. But there seems to be one that doesn't match the rest. 
and I point towards the d- direction of the hoofed markings. Perhaps this would this is the culprit. Well, immediately upon uh, coming across the scene, mm-hmm. um, the, I'm, I was wearing uh, as soon as oh excuse me, I equip my I take my gauntlet off my waist or whatever. I don't know what's maybe lurking around here that did this. So I get my gauntlet on. The shadow quickly, as soon as I put it on, goes across my arm, across my back, turns into wings. I'm not using them to as to fly yet, just just for flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, you said, I, I say to Kokan, you said to the north. Yes, you see these markings, these prints. They do not match the rest. Well, whatever it is that did this might have went that way. We should be ready. Is that the direction we should be going? No, you said to the north. That's the direction we're supposed to go. Mm-hmm. The campfire. Well, you got a master in character. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, to the north. So you guys proceed north. You find another body of um, one of these creatures with the mouths, and then you find another one and another one. How quietly are you guys proceeding forward? Well, I was just going to say um, what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, create my illusionary duplicate. Okay. And vanish myself. Good. And let my illusionary duplicate walk with the party. I'm not even telling them what I'm doing. I'm just going to be about mm, 10 feet back just so I get be observant and watch like I said my you know this is my nature mm-hmm. and communicate with them and everything you know as normal you know so and I yeah. would say that um was it Drac whenever in a ruined situation especially after gaining um his shadow companion it just becomes second nature to try to sneak as a shadow would like be quiet you know not try to make too much noise um, so I guess I would be stealthy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think if I'm unless I'm directly told to be as quiet as possible, I'm just walking. Of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Al, I'm gonna Al, I'm gonna ask you for a stealth check. All right. I rolled a four. Um, I'm gonna what you call it? Use my XP to reroll that. Go ahead. We get rid of them. Zero XP now. 18. That's much better. Natural 18, yes. Much better. Um, And let me just see here. Uh, we're, we're, is, is Coco at all trained in? Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Coco has a bunch of inabilities. <laughs> <laughs> and um, only, he's not. Only trained in understanding Numenera perception. That's it. And <laughs> what to call it? Living. Um, excuse me. Um, if if uh if Kokan is walking normally and I see or what I assume is Solo is Solo also walking normally next to, um, he's walking normally but he's not making any noise. Which yeah, I'm not. I'm not like going. Hey, come. No, see no, no. Me. I know. I know. You're not. You're no, not no, trying to be stealthy. Saying, is what I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm Solo. Solo is walking normal, but you notice he's not making any sound whatsoever. But seeing that y'all are not trying to conceal yourselves in any way, I definitely would have been slightly off to the side, quote unquote, again, trying to be shadow like. Um, mm-hmm. like, I don't know if that matters for anything, but mm-hmm. just throwing out there's flavor, or again, if it matters, that's exactly how it's okay. going down. So to continue forward, well, you're going to have to wind around what are what are kind of like um, like little islands of trash um, mm-hmm. uh, that have presumably fallen from the walls or the ceiling. Um, Coco, you've made uh, no attempt to be quiet. No. So here's what happens. Um, as you turn past one of these islands of uh, junk and trash and, and debris, you immediately come face to face with another marger. This one looks really old. Um, all of the hair on its body is gray. Um, It has scars on its face that look very old. It has a couple of wounds that look recent too. And it's holding in between you and it, a spear. And wrapped around the end of the spear looks like bits of 
uh, debris that it has probably gathered from the environment. There's jagged edges of metal. There's what looks like barbed wire wrapped around. And it's just holding this spear pointing at you. Um, without missing a beat, I stop like right in front of it and I go, I am so sorry for your loss, unless you're the one that created this. The Marger begins to speak and Marger are known to speak. Um, they have a very limited vocabulary, um, either due to their um, uh, lack of exposure to, to humans, or perhaps they have another means of communication that we don't fully understand. But this one's a bit different, and you've probably encountered Marger before, especially Coco, uh, perhaps as a traveling kind of uh, freak show. You may have even ha had some uh, 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 Marger um, come and go. This one seems particularly more eloquent and articulate. Could, and it, could I um, have a player intrusion? Yeah, what is it? For my one XP, I actually, um, in my traveling freak show, we had a martyr and I'm very comfortable around them. That way, that why, um, that's the reason why I'm, I'm you know, not alarmed by seeing it and just stopping casually. Fantastic, love yeah. it. Um, go ahead. Just real quick, from the shadows again, I'm assuming I was unseen. Mm -hmm. See, do I see this happening? Do I see the yes. martyr? Do I so seeing this? Can I use foil danger? And again, if I have to roll to remain unseen while I do it, yeah. Um, essentially, it says I negate one source of potential danger. I just want to point, like, basically, if the guy tries to attack him with the spear, okay. make it not dangerous, like he won't be able to attack with it or whatever. We essentially, the way I flavor it is I want to throw my shadow onto it, and if he attempts to attack. Um, what is it, Kokan? Mm -hmm. The shadow repels it or moves it out of the Move way. Move it out of the way, or perhaps as it was described, it, it looks like a lot of things have been stuck to it and wrapped around it. Maybe they kind of loosen or something and they would fall off if, if he were to try yeah. and do it. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So this Marger um, looks at you, Kokan, uh, and, and says, you will proceed no further. I will fight you to the death as I did to these creatures who did this to my tribe. And you hear a little squeak. And from behind this marger, you see a baby marger. And then you see a couple more, and some of them are hiding in the trash heaps. And, oh. and, and this marger goes, these ones are under my protection. I will fight you to the death. I have no doubt that you are a capable warrior willing to defend your young kid. But we mean you no harm. And we are not the, these others. We, may, we want to simply pass. And about that time, you know, um, my illusionary duplicate, my voice just sounds a little bit further away, but you hear the illusionary dude, he just says, uh, actually, I think you're the ones we're supposed to find and set free. Explain yourselves. The many-eyed one sent us to find you. Yes, the gifted one. He has been gone from our tribe for some time. Oh, uh, he's here. He told us to come and find you and save you. Do you know a way out of this nightmare? We do. So, I'm going to say with Anthony's player intrusion, um, particularly, this Marger is feeling very much at ease. Um, so I'm not going to ask for any sort of um, roles to kind of convince this Marger of your good intentions or spirits. There seems to have been a rapport that was es uh, established kind of almost silently between um, Coco and um, this Marger. Um, to even help that out flavor-wise, while it. Solo is having this conversation, since I've traveled, you know, I, I'm a traveling 
freak show entertainer. I have all sorts of inabilities when it comes to conversing with adults, but I'm the exact opposite with children. <laughs> so I sit behind him like a, you know, you know, like on all for on my knees. And all of a sudden I make all the markings on my body appear as rainbow cascades. And with um, hedge magic, I start making little forms of metal dance around me, like almost like a crown. And um, I'm trying to entertain the little children behind them. Um, they, the ones who are hiding sort of come out um, mm. and they, they kind of approach you like very cautiously. They seem very timid um, and very, still very scared. Some of them are kind of shaking. And, and all of a sudden they see little metal pebbles start flying into the center and they swirl in the ball and then all of a sudden like I, I make a teddy bear appear out of metal pebbles then i make a flower appear out of metal pe pebbles and i levitate each one to each individual kid um this brings a lot of joy to them uh, uh, very visibly um but you hear the older marger pipe up uh, after a moment and he says, I hope you can do a bit more than just create tricks with that. I'm afraid one of these foul creatures had escaped my attempts to kill them all and is probably still lurking around here. So you best be on your guard. I look at, um, I look at the marker and go, how many are you? How many in my tribe? Well, at least those that live. How many do you protect? Me? Are there any other? Are there any other warriors? No. It is me and these little ones. Very well. Then two things need to happen. One, we need to find the assailant that you say still exists. Two, we need to prepare you and your group you know, for egress. So, can you give us any idea of how we should approach finding this creature and stopping it? What is it? And why is it so hostile to you and your people? I do not know what it is. These things clearly kill for entertainment. They ruthlessly and viciously tore through my tribe, making hideous laughing sounds as they did. They can disappear into the shadows very well. That is all I know. I suspect that the other one had fled further north. Prepare yourselves. We'll head north and see what we can find. All right. I look hey, at Coco. I, I look at Coco and go, you can play with the children later. We this is the first together. time you've actually seen Coco smile since in the five days you've known him. Yeah. And like I said, this is the first time I've probably directly spoken to you. I go, you can play with the children later. We have work to do. And you can see that the the levity, the normal, you know, playfulness in me is gone. I'm focused now. And you see also, like, you can, like, tell when he looks at the children, there's almost a longing in his eyes, almost like, yeah, you know, I, I, I wish, you know. I, I say in their language what little bit I know mm -hmm. of when I get up, these toys will disappear. It's all an illusion, but so is the illusion of your fear. And they all kind of nod. <sighs> All right, so you guys continue further north. Yeah. I still remain like a shadow, <clears throat> if I can. So one of the things that catches your eye as you continue to move further north through this canyon 
is there is a giant shaft of metal um, going almost all the way up to the top, as high uh, probably from where you had come originally. Um, and at the very top of this, um, you can see what looks like a um, like a, a, a box, um, and you can you can see that there are channels in this giant. Um, this giant uh, uh, strut, basically, that is going straight up. And at the bottom of this strut is laying another body. But this is not one of the monsters, and it is not one of the marger. This one looks distinctly human. And how does it look like it died? Why don't you make me uh, some type of perception check? Hmm. Uh, 17. Um, reasonable to assume that uh, this person fell to their death. Okay. Check their body. Do they have anything useful? Any, you know, ciphers or equipment, gear? You find uh, a medallion of the Order of Truth. Is this person dressed in Order of Truth robes? Yep. Do they look like an Aeon Priest or just one of their acolytes? This one looks like an Aeon Priest. Okay, well, I'll take his medallion and I look back at the guys and go, now we know why they sent us in here and not them coming in again. You just hear a snickering from shadows. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to try to identify or assess danger to see if I can locate uh, Mouthy or any other danger around us. And I will roll that. I will spend the next fee because I rolled a two. (laughs) (laughs) Natural 20. Natural 20. You actually pick up some tracks of this creature. And you can see it trailing off to the north, going through what looks like it used to, at some point, probably be a doorway. And it looks like there's a room further in there. Okay. Um, I alert my companions and start stealthily heading that way. And I look over my shoulder and go, Coco, quietly. And I'm definitely, again, still stealthily being in the shadows. You guys haven't seen me. I mean, if you, you know I'm there, but you know, I'm kind of trying to blend in with whatever darkness there is. I understand. Oh, the, the, the last thing before we before we move forward, um, could we assess about how long the Aeon Priest had been dead? Um, A few days. OK. Yeah, a few days, maybe a week. All right, so he's starting to stink. All right, perfect. <laughs> he's well into his funk. Yes. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're going to move forward stealthily. Uh, and uh, I'm specialized in stealth. Okay. When um, he says move stealthily, I just hover and float forward so I don't, I'm not touching the ground at all. Yeah, I'll count that as an asset to a stealth check. Very good. And I take one more point off my head. Wait, are we rolling again for this? For stealth? Or are you guys gonna try and enter this room it looks like this creature yeah. went into? Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. So oh, I... oh. <laughs> No, I don't like that. But either way, let me roll my <laughs> I rolled a one again, Claire. Ooh, and I rolled a natural four. So I definitely <laughs> I uh, I rolled something a I rolled a fourteen. Oh so what what happened with me is um my shadow had remained on the guy's spear on the, that old Moggers. Mm-hmm. And as it retreated to me, it, it came with a little bit of force and kind of knocked me down. Um, okay. like as it, as it like attached to my back and I like kind of stumbled out of my, my little hidden position. So we're going to put another a pin in a uh, intrusion for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what have to give do up is like Anthony will use roll 20. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else will use real dice at home. 
Uh, I knew it was bad because I had a 19 and a 17 a few minutes ago. So I was like, I know a one or a two. The odd bit's coming off. Yeah. Player doesn't have to give out XP because you're giving them all, giving them all their intrusions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, so you guys enter this place. Um, uh, the the marger is not necessarily. I mean, the marger is sort of moving with you, but they don't necessarily look look like they're going to go into this room with you. Um, oh. They're gonna they're gonna stay and protect the the children. Right. So you enter uh, a circular room um, that is um, filled with. Uh, what look like ancient uh, data pads that are flickering <coughs> on and off um, to life. Um, they display indecipherable glyphs and texts. And um, there are um, a whole variety of different um, machines here that look in much better shape than a lot of the other stuff that you've seen in, in this place. Um, there's, there's a large triangular device that has a plastic hose running out of it. Um, there are a whole bunch of different uh, uh, um, chambers. There's one that is a single column that has multiple arms that almost looks like a spider that is standing upright. Um, and um, these things are all kind of, you know, they're not moving. Um, everything is kind of, uh, these look like devices that probably haven't been touched uh, in years. Um, many, many, many years. <laughs> um, and that, that is what is in this room. And do we see any, like, uh, more of those tracks of the thing that we're trying to find? Yes. Um, you see them. Um, they kind of go to a wall, and then they stop. Um, can I have said that I have uh, created my deadly poison and just have it in a vial? Sure. You know, and sealed so it doesn't lose its potency and so sure. whatnot. Um, I'm going to uh, open it up and cope my throwing blades and my uh, my my, uh, my my twin long blades, you know, long bladed daggers, my dirks. So whatever this thing is, it's gonna not like me. So we're, um, I know I'm getting an intrusion anyway, but I'll play <laughs> out my one. With my one, I bypass everything and go straight to the end of where the track is. Good. Um, you begin hearing um, a, a shaking in in the in the ceiling, and if you look up in the ceiling, there's just there's tubes and wires, and this creature drops down from the ceiling, and this will be the the GM intrusion, and <laughs> pins you down um, to the ground, and it just starts thrashing at you. And I'm going to tell you from this alone, you're going to take two points of might damage. Okay. Um, who who is going to respond first to this situation? Do we roll for initiative? Uh, you can if you would like. Sure. Um, right. Just, I mean, I would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got a fourteen on initiative. Okay. I got seventeen. Um, I got fourteen as well. Okay, great. Um, how about uh, what we're gonna have is Anthony and um, Dean just. Roll me a d20. Whoever gets the highest one out of that will will break that tie. I got a 17. <laughs> I got a 17. <laughs> you want me to go first, Dean? Because he's actually on top of me. Yeah, that's yeah. I'll just yeah. I'll, I'll let him do whatever he's gonna do. But yeah. either way, after it drops, right? Um, what does it look like? What does it look like? It's on top of this. On top of um, Pokan. Um, it is it is a, a, a humanoid creature um, that is completely pale. Um, it's 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 hands uh, uh, elongate into these um, sharp nails, and um, its mouth its head is covered in mouths, um, and it's making this hissing sound as it as it's trying to claw at Coco. Remind me what you got again on your initiative roll, um, Al. Seventeen. So you get to act first on this. So what I do immediately is I send my shadow forward from um, from my back. It goes up my arm down to the floor, or you know mm -hmm. down to my leg to the floor onto this creature, and I want to foil danger again. 
Um, okay. And again, it says I can also prevent things like uh, mundane actions, such as an attack with a claw or weapon. And it says I make my roll against the level of the attack, danger, or creature. So I guess I roll against the level of the creature. You don't have to tell yes. me what it is, but I will roll it out. Um, I will also apply effort on this. Mm-hmm. Um, what you call it? So the thing costs two. I have two edge, so I gotta spend three for the edge. Or excuse me, the effort. I think goes down to fifteen. And I roll. I roll the fifteen. That's enough. And this is for uh, reducing the danger. Yeah. So basically, yeah. it says it, it, it on the. Let me read it verbatim. Uh, Go ahead. All right, so you can also try to foil a foe's mundane action, such as an attack with a weapon or claw, so that the action isn't made this round. So essentially, I see that it's swiping at him with his claws, and I want to prevent that from happening, or biting sure. him, or whatever. Yeah, so um, so what I will say is that um, this this creature is actually next, um, so its its next action will not happen. All right. That works? Yeah, so what you guys see happen is um, it's trying to swipe at uh, Kokan while it's pinned, either with claws or like even trying to bite it. But as it gets inches from his face, the shadows keep it from actually reaching you and damaging you. So like what Kokan sees his first hand is like, like things are almost hitting him, but they're coated in this dark shadow that are preventing him from actually hitting you. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, this thing is not able to land any sort of attack on you, um, but Coco, you are up next. Yeah, um, I'm pinned to the ground now. Mm -hmm. and now you see that um all the ruins on my head are bright bright purple purplish red and they like pulsating almost and um you know i have that metal rod i mm -hmm. let go of it and it floats in between me and the creature and i'm using my push ability to push it off of me so will um al's ability give me an asset on this roll um yeah, let's do that. I like that because I like where this is going. And I'm going to apply a level of effort. So I'll take one from my point. Because I got two edge. So I, I rolled a 10 on the die and I had an asset and a level of effort. A 10 is enough. Now describe uh, kind of what happens to pushing this creature off. All right, you see the staff, you know, my metal staff gets between, it doesn't do any damage. But it pushes him. The, I mean, it, uh, it, the, my metal rod staff goes between me and it, and it just you, you hear the sound of like um, you know, like a suction of air pushing it away from me, and it allows me to scramble from underneath its clutches, so it's no longer on top. Of it. That's Great. beautiful. It pushes it a short Love distance. It. So when Love he it. when he pushes the creature, I just let fly my uh, throwing blade right at it. Um, it's a light weapon, so that gives me uh, training in it. So that's uh, basically a level of effort. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm going to expend a level of effort. Great. And um, no, actually, I'll spend, because I, I'll spend two levels of effort. I'll spend Ooh. a level of effort to hit and a level of effort for extra damage. Oh, perfect. And let's see what the die says. The die says a 19. Oh, that, uh, yeah. So would you like a minor effect or do you want to do even more damage? Um, well, I think the damage is going to be ridiculous enough. So, because that's... Um, Light seven. weapon being two, um, extra damage brings it up to five. But, and the poison. And the poison brings it up to seven. Um, and if you were to take uh, 19 uh, for extra damage, that would do another three points of damage. This would be 10 points of damage, I believe. Two, five, seven, yeah. Um, yeah, why not? Let's do the damage. Okay, great. So yeah, describe um, how your blades dig into this creature as it has been thrust back from uh, Coco's um, uh, uh, staff and, and magnetic abilities. Its capacity to do more damage was seemingly reduced very much um, by Drax. And now you step in throwing this, throwing your your, your poison tipped daggers. Um, you basically, you see him just hurl the blade and it actually makes a weird sound. Goes, as it, sails through the air, you know, the blades have little holes in them, so they 
you know, stabilizing their flight and the blade strikes home right in one of its mouths. Nice. Uh, this thing uh, lets out this this, this whispering scream. Um, it, 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 it starts at a whisper, this and then it, it's this howling sound um, as, as, it, as, it, as it goes to like uh, address its, its wound that you just uh, gave it. And we're gonna go back to the top of initiative here with Drac. Uh, after the shadow oh, is preventing the attacks and I see that this push and damage a bit, the shadow retracts back into my gauntlet. Uh, and as such, I rush towards and try to punch it with my shadow coated metal gauntlet. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, let me just. I'm gonna add. Would this be speed or my punch it? Either. All right, I'm gonna go with speed. I'm gonna use one level of effort for hitting it. Mm hmm. Got my speed by two. I'm gonna roll it out. I got a nine. So, yeah. I don't know what the level is, but. Like I uh, a nine on the die um, does not do it, um, and this Rare. creature uh, braces against your 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 punch and and just knocks it off to the side, and it's going to go in and try and dig its claws into you now. And I'm going to ask you to make a speed defense roll. I don't think I'm trained with that. I'm just going to roll it out normally. I roll the thirteen. Uh, a thirteen is uh, sadly not enough. <laughs> um, this uh, this creature uh, digs its claws into you, and and you can feel it pierce your flesh, and it just yanks back, and you're gonna take five points of damage. Oh, all right, down to five. Uh, yeah, you saw some shadow try to like get in the way, but it wasn't fast enough, so a creature just oh. as well. <laughs> Coco. Um. After seeing Drax get hit by this, and even though I don't necessarily agree with his intellect, I've actually grown to like him. You see me as I scrambled on off my feet, you know, from this creature pinning me down. Um, you see me turn my attention to Drax and this creature going head to head. And I once again close my eyes and then open them rather quickly. And you see a bunch of whatever metal debris that's surrounding this creature and I'm casting Onslaught, like um, hover over him and then um, cas uh, cascade down onto it with as much force as I can. So I'm applying one level of effort to the attack and one level of effort for damage. Great. Uh, let me just subtract this all. So that was uh, five minus two. Uh, we got 11 intellect. All right, I got a 16 on the die roll plus one level of effort, so it'll be a 19. Yep, that is that is what is needed. Um, yeah. And that will be uh, seven points of damage. Perfect. Um, and this was this was an assault with like a, a bunch of metal, correct? Yes. Yeah. So. Um, uh, uh, this the, the metal begins to shred at this creature's body and blood begins pouring out of it. It stumbles a bit and gets its balance and once again lets out that, that whispering howl that starts so quiet and then starts beginning to like, like almost as if you can hear it in the, the bouncing on the inside of your skull. Um, Solo, you are next. Um, when I see this thing, uh, you know, tear into uh, drag, you know, I just follow up with another blade, you know, and start, and as the blade leaves my hand, you see my hands come up and I pull my, you know, two, basically you think Legolas fighting knives, they're, you know, short swords or whatever, you know, but he's getting ready to go in, uh, but the blade, 18. That hits. So, uh. um, that'll be five plus Two points for the eighteen. Would you like to describe uh, or your? It would be nine. It'd be nine points of damage. Would you like to describe your kill? Ooh. Um, sure. So when, you know, he basically, like I said, he shoulder rolls to to build momentum when he releases the blade, and as he rolls up, he's pulling his blades, but the blade flies true, and it just slices right through the top of his head, and the blade comes out the back and sticks in a wall or you know a piece of machinery you know as the creature probably you know just is like stunned and then drops 
and just for flavor and purposes, the shadow on my back actually made me crouch. Well, it got me out of the way of the shadow was like basically watching my back. Yeah, it made me <laughs> duck. So, uh, that was an awesome kill. But solo, can I offer you a GM intrusion? Absolutely. All right. So, I never two seen... XP go out. And one who, ga to... who gains the other one? Uh, one goes to uh, Drac. Excellent. Hey, I actually have XP. So, <laughs> your knife strikes into the wall. About a second or two after this creature dies, sparks begin uh, flying out of the wall, and electricity dances. Uh, across the whole wall in the ceiling and starts going over all of the objects. Um, and, and if you recall, I said there were a number of data pads here and they all begin flashing and they all begin flashing solo down, solitary, incredible speed. Oh, shit. Okay, so... And um, one last thing, there I, there was a triangular object uh, in the center of the room and there was a tube coming out of it. And at the end of this tube is a bright violet light that is now pulsing. Okay. Um, I look around, is my data pad going off too? Oh yeah. I'm like, brothers? You know, and um, I'll I'll try to do an assessment with my uh, function and power. Go for it. Ability, and I will definitely spin both levels of effort, uh, two levels of effort uh, for the intellect roll. And the dice say the dice say fifteen. Okay, great. So, um. The tube that is shining out that violet light, it's trying to make a connection with your mind. You're not sure how you know this, but you just know this. But there is just something blocking it. Hmm. And I'll also say this, this may be of interest to Coco, the, the light, extends out a bit of a hologram and it looks like that circular thing that Dusty Pete was playing with. That's the object. What? The object Pete had. I start walking towards it. Can I take my recovery roll while listening oh, yeah. to that one? Oh, and if that's, possible, uh, would it, it would it that. be okay to take the ten minute recovery roll? Sure, yeah, like we could say you guys spend ten minutes in here. This. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that yeah. wasn't my ten minute. I, I, that you still had your action, yeah, but yeah. I gotta take my ten minute one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, that probably. I rolled another two. Come on, what is this? Did you get a two? Yeah, it's like you can reroll. You can reroll that. No, I won't. No. Okay. <laughs> but that's just hilarious. I'm gonna put it all in might. <laughs> From that big ass slash, you just see me wrote, take out two four, of those like I, little vials yeah. from the floor. Just nice. I wrote a four, so I got eight back, so I can get my speed back to maximum and my intellect back to seventeen. I also rolled a two, but I put it all in intellect, so it put me back to seventeen. Oh man! I'm walking towards the the hologram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, and the hologram it, is coming out of this tube. And if he said it out loud, that's the thing that Dusty had. I would definitely follow him to examine it. <laughs> is the tube metallic? Um, no. It is uh, some type of synthetic material. Yeah, I'm definitely still walking in that direction. Sure. Um, if you guys are, are you talking out loud? I yeah. basically, I said out loud that that's mm -hmm. the, the artifact that- uh, Yeah, and I, would, and I would say I would have said out loud that, and it's a projection, right, of it, basically? 
Mm -hmm. Is it very detailed? Is it vague? Is what does it look like? It, it it just kind of looks like a hovering ring, but the ring sort of changes in size um, as you are speaking. And if you speak more, the ring actually reacts. Can I use perception to see what this tube is connected to? Uh, it's connected to a, a triangular box of some kind. That is made out of metal. So uh, can, I, can I use understanding Numenera to see uh, maybe what's powering this thing? Go for it. So, I got four. <laughs> when when I wrote the function of power, did it what? It didn't give me like any idea of exactly what this thing is doing. Um, it as as I said, it's trying to connect with your brain in some way, or your mind. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be adventurous here. Uh, where my data pad is embedded into my hand, mm -hmm. I'm going to go and put it right to where that device is. Connect, make a physical connection to try okay. to bridge the gap. When you do this, um, a vision flashes in your mind. Um, it actually sort of, um, as a matter of fact, um, uh, Coco and Drac might see that your eyes roll in the back of your head for a moment. And you see this vision of a battle. And there are soldiers fighting these constructs made out of red crystal. Um, and above them, is this giant uh, meteor coming from the sky. And you can see that the soldiers are actually screaming the words solo down. Mm. Okay. So those red crystals, do they look like the crystals we saw in that room with- uh... Yeah, they do. Okay. Oh. Um. So interesting. When I come out of it, I'll tell the I'll tell my companions what I saw and so on and so forth. Um, and I'll uh, I say, okay, so we've liberated. I just turn and go tell them what I saw. And I look at. It. So it looks like we've liberated the Margaret's people. Um, we'll probably be able to get them out of here once we get the astral lens and now we have to go back through and let him know that he can open the doors now um is that the lens i start pointing to the hologram image of the floating ring would we would we think that's it um, if you use the data pad you were given from the Aeon Priest, you get sort of the same thing, where the numbers um, decrease in, in their count, but they are not stable. Mm. I think that might help us find it. I don't think that's it. I think what will happen is when we're in the right place, these numbers are going to stop. This is basically what we've been, what we've been seeing the whole time. The numbers increase as we move further away, but the closer we get to any information, it seems to slow down. And I think it'll probably stabilize when we find the lens itself. So it's in Dusty Pete's possession because I seen this object in Dusty Pete's hands. That object there? That very same one, yes. The drag is definitely shaking his head safe. Clark and Dusty. <laughs> well, I guess we have to go back and see if DP is still around. And we'll head back up. He would he really know? Right. And I'll tell the well, we'll tell the old marker. I'll, I'll look, turn to him, and go. I never got your name, oh ancient one. My name is Bo. Wobo. You and your youngling should be safe for the time being. We have a couple of more things to complete here. 
and we'll make our way back to uh, extract you at the appropriate time. Yes, I will wait here. Please don't take long. We'll make it as quick as we possibly can. And I'm gonna add a little detail here. As Bo turns to go back to the children, um, he has a necklace uh, uh, filled with a whole bunch of various oddities. One of them is a medallion of the Order of Truth. Hmm. Real quick, Bo. Yes. Where'd you acquire that one? A memento from a dear friend. We had traveled many miles together and he taught me many things. Very well. All right, so we're gonna, I guess we're gonna try to scramble back up the wall and see if we can encounter DP again. Yeah, and uh, so uh, definitely for the interest of time, we will say that you oh. guys are you guys are able to make your way back up there. We won't do a series of checks. But oh, hold on, can, can I uh, use one of my ciphers? Remember, Trailblazer allows me to take people. By, I, I could teleport exactly. <laughs> yeah. Back. Okay. So can I teleport to where where he was, and perhaps we'll get a surprise action attacking him or surprise. You Wait, you want to you want to teleport to where Dusty Pete was? Exactly. Yeah. Can you take people with you? That's I can a good take question. one person with me. So do you guys want to strategize on that in somehow? I'll let him take um what the solo. Um I'm more of the shadowy sneaky type. I can make my claws again, climb my way back up, do it the slow fashioned way, and then or you could stumble fly. upon Oh yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to, again, I don't want to waste it. Okay, okay. whatever. I mean, okay. well, I, 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 if you allow me to flavor it, then I'll, I I'll allow, I'll allow you to get up to the top by one, <laughs> one expenditure of void wings. <laughs> I have you void wings. Basically, you appear instantly, so we could teleport to the very last, you know, because it's, um, if I made footsteps there, I could teleport there. So I could teleport to the very last place we were together. And you're going to take Solo with you? Uh, yes. And I'll take and I'll be, way. And when he does it, he, he thinks he's taking, he, uh, he's actually taking me, but I'll, by the time we get there, I'll be turned invisible again. Okay. Yeah, but we don't have to travel. The, the, I mean, all right, just outside of game, my thing is, is we teleport and attack immediately. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if you're going to hide, then it kind of, def you're wasting my sight. Oh, you want, well, you want to attack him. Just surprise. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because I thought you were going to be diplomatic. You liked the guy. You did. Yeah, I did. But, but he, you now I found out he lied to me. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, if you want to get in there and attack him, all right. Sounds good to me. I mean, if you don't, we could just travel straight through. We. I was actually going to save this for us to get to the gate. But if you're not, uh, I mean, this is a quick way of us being able to get so, there. Yeah. And I'm surprised. I mean, we can do that. I, I I have no problem stabbing a guy. I mean, that means my poison is still effective. I don't need to add new coats. So sure, <laughs> just do it. Well, here's what happens when you teleport. You go back to that room with the crystals and that door is wide open. And outpouring from that door is glorious, wonderful sunlight. And oh. you can smell fresh air. And if you look beyond this door, you see trees and there's a river running through and we need to go to the river so uh do we wait for drax you don't yeah, see we... any sign of dusty pete by the way his bags are gone and everything yep okay yeah he's gonna be a problem all right so yeah we better wait for drag we you know we 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 took the option to try to surprise this knucklehead, but probably when the minute we killed that thing and saved the people, the martyr opened the door. Um, but yeah, I, I, I guess I'm making my way. You arrive. I, I sneakily, um, I'm sneaking in there, but then I see they're just standing there waiting for man to stand up normally like, oh. While we wait for Drax, I would have taken a perception roll like outside the gate to see if there was any tracks or anything leading outside from. Yeah, make me that roll. Uh, 15 on the row and I'm drained. You do not spot any tracks, but there are two things that I will tell you that you notice with that roll. One, 
dotted throughout the trees, you see these crystalline spires. They're not red though. They're kind of a shade of amber or yellow. And two, you hear this whirring sound. It's kind of hard to hear uh, actually under the river. The sound of the river flowing is actually a little bit louder than this, but you hear this whirring sound. Before we leave, I'm, you know, that jar, that mason jar I had that I had the, the metal shards in, I'm going to grab whatever loose nuts and bolts I can and fill up the jar again. Okay. Because I know we're going into a forest, so there might not be as many metallic objects. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, then, yeah, I, I just, so. You know, I, just, just, and just for purposes, um, while he's doing that, I'm not even going to pay, you know, I'm going to just do, do the same thing. I'm going to just grab him some extra stuff and throw it in my, in my, one of my pouches just to get some extra metal for him. Since yeah. I'm... <laughs> yeah, I have no pouches. I have a robe and a sash. <laughs> I, I have one mason jar. <laughs> um, what to call it? I personally, I know I already have some metal on me. I'm assuming my Azir steel is metal, so I'm not worried about yes. gathering more. Yes. Um, and not that he knows I have it, but either way, um, I see them getting ready, or I guess I come upon this as I sneak up. I stand yep. up like, he's not he here? Was, he wasn't here. I like slam like a fist on my side, like my thigh or something. Like that. Just he, he. And Do you went hear this way, door? like I point at the door. Yeah, it was open when we got here. Just he. And uh, yeah, I, I guess we start heading that way. At least I start walking that way. If, if that's the assumption that he went. So when you step into this space, um, this is this is a massive chamber, a um, uh, couple hundred feet wide, uh, by you know another couple hundred feet long. Um, it feels like you are standing in the middle of a, a forest in the, the middle of the day. Um, if you look up, you can actually see a sky. But every now and then you hear a very faint bang sound and the sky like flickers like a screen that's going bad but the light doesn't it doesn't flicker enough to cause light to fade um the light remains constant but there's like a static flickering all throughout it it's always an illusion i just look at my two companions what what have we stumbled upon here as I turn back and walk more into this a chamber or forest? <laughs> I assume we're following the noise. I definitely would be. If you point out the whirring and I hear it, uh, if, if there's a like a source, we definitely would seem to locate it. Maybe it'll get rid of this illusion for us. Oh, you see the illusion as well. I mean, I just point out the sky is flickering, bro. <laughs> it's the old. source the source of the whirring slowly becomes apparent um there is um perhaps 60 feet in diameter is this hexagonal construct that is floating around in this space and it has on its sides multiples of different arms and it floats down into the trees and it actually starts trimming them and then it will go and with another arm and actually harvest some of the fruit and bring it into its body um, and then every now and then um, it will emit a, a, a ray of light and will sweep the area like you're scanning yep how how often is that ray of light emitted Let's say every time it goes down to maintain one of the trees, after it's done sort of trimming some of them and collecting some of the fruit, it will then do that. And we'll say that happens maybe once every minute or so. Okay. Well, it said, what was what was the Margar's message? Uh, Pass the river? The Margar said, the heart lies in the riverbed. So we need to go swimming. Well, isn't that just dandy? I'm adaptable. <laughs> 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 so 
So let's head to the river, guys, and uh, we're going to do our best to avoid being scanned by the... When, when the thing does a scan, I'm going to say probably the best thing to do is I'm going to, like, lean up against the tree right next to the tree as close as possible so it just looks like organic matter on the tree mm -hmm. and then keep moving. Or, or we could um, cause a distraction and make it go totally away. We can start. How are you going to do that? I open up my mason jar. <laughs> 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 and I scatter some of the metal right, and I lift it and then I, I repel metal have some of it like I wanted the metal to like maybe hit it and then the, the rest of the pieces go in the opposite direction from where we are so I guess I'll roll to try to hit it with some metal pebbles right would that make sense you're going you're going to try and like, you know, not like huge chunks of metal, but little bolts. Yeah, I'm just gonna, like hit it. You'll hit it with one or two and have the other ones go in the opposite direction of where we're walking from. Okay. Um, so hopefully the scanner will pick that up and want to move in that direction. I will tell you, um, based on your assessment of the scanner and that you're a nano, um, that what you would like to do will be a level five task. Okay. I'll apply a level of effort. Bring that down to a level four, so you only need to roll a 12. Matter of fact, no, I, I'm gonna apply two levels of effort. Okay, <laughs> we'll bring that down to a three. You only need to roll a nine. Let's see what happens. Oh boy. I got exactly a nine. <laughs> That's what you need. Ooh, we take those. <laughs> take those all day. Right, Perfect. Um, so more. this was purely to distract this machine, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, you send out uh, the, these, uh, it was uh, like the, the bolts and things you had in your mason jar, correct? Yeah, yeah so you, you throw that out and, and, and pieces of it hit it and then some other pieces scatter off and this machine lets out this enormous uh, like foghorn sound and immediately goes off to find where the other pieces went. While, while Solo's like hiding behind the tree, I walk over and casually say, what are you doing? <laughs> I look at him and go, uh-huh. Yeah. And stare ahead directly for the river. I follow suit. Quickly. So as soon yeah, as soon as you get to the river and you look through the water, you can actually see that the riverbed is made out of uh, synth. Um, uh, some type of synthetic material at the very least. And uh, there are grooves uh, cut into it that uh, basically form channels. And if you follow those channels, um, they lead you to what looks like a um, like a 10 foot by 10 foot gr uh, 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 door underwater. Okay. Um, well, I'm adaptable, so I'll, and you know, <laughs> You see, I got. That was quiet swimming. <laughs> I'm going to uh, go down and see if I can discern if there's a uh, panel, lever, handle, pad to open the door, or whatever. Matter of fact, I'm even going to try to use my my built-in and see if that does anything. You know. So there are a series of buttons on the top of this door. So describe how you're going to try and troubleshoot this. I'm going to pull out the scanner that they gave us. Mm -hmm. When you do that, those numbers pop up, and they are even uh, fewer in number, and they are substantially more stable. OK. So as I move in front of the different ones, and I'm going to use my uh, my, my own built-in data pad mm -hmm. and see if I get any response you know, from the buttons, the series of buttons, you know, if there's anything that, you know, shows up to try to give me a code or, you know, something like that. And I'll even throw in function, you know, and make it make a roll. Yeah, you do. You yeah, go ahead and make the roll. Uh, 12 want to die 12 we'll say that yeah okay so that's enough you actually um, uh, the the hologram off of your data pad begins to um, 
uh, it almost feels like it's interfacing with this with this door in some way, and the buttons begin to light up in a particular sequence. I'll touch them in that sequence. The second you touch them, um, you guys, especially those above water, hear that enormous um, fog horn again. Oh boy! And the whirring gets even louder. Yeah, well, I'll quickly punch in the sequence. <laughs> <laughs> you you punch in that sequence, um, and you hear these enormous banging sounds, and the, the river begins to slowly drain. But this construct is headed your way. Well, as soon as I see the water lowering, I'm assuming, do we see the door opening? down there if we can see through no, the water? The door has not opened yet. So the water's just draining. Mm-hmm. I would definitely have jumped in seeing the water drain assuming that the door is going to open soon. <laughs> as soon as the water starts draining, I jump in. Um, um, I don't I don't like, like swim to the bottom, obviously. If I swim over to where I guess underneath me would be solo you know diving pressing buttons so that if i you know if the water goes low enough i will just you know kind of you know float towards them Coco, uh, what are I'm you a, doing i'm a little more hesitant than that is i just jump or like put one foot in and like try to like wish with you know all my heart that this water drain a lot faster than it's actually doing the second you do that um you hear this whooshing sound as a column of metal is screaming towards you. Make me a speed defense roll. Oh, and I am, since repel metal gives me an acid and speed defense against any metal attacks, mm -hmm. I'll have an acid against that. And since it's speed defense, I'll, I'll apply one level of effort. So I got a 14 on the die with uh, acid and a level of effort. You dodge out of the way, um, but from the trees, this construct now approaches. Um, and I'm going to ask for initiative rolls from folks. Sure. All right. I have a two on my initiative. <laughs> I rolled <a> good. <laughs> 17. I'm keeping my six. You got a six? Yes. Okay. Uh, Solo, you are up. <clears throat> I don't think poison is going to do anything against that, nor is adaptation. Um, is the water lowering? Do... Dean right. first, and then. Um, what I'm going to do, uh, I. I want to try to assess this thing. I'm going to use my function of power ability. I'm going to spend a level of effort. Mm -hmm. to understand what this is and perhaps be able to tell my friends to give them an asset because I don't think, you know, at this point, a knife or poison is going to do me much good. <laughs> so I'm going to go the other direction and become the guy who offers the information to, and maybe even, uh, you know what, I'll even spend an XP if yeah. you let me. Yeah. Uh, the player intrusion will be that I had from interfacing in that other room with all the technology, I have an insight and I figure a way to either make, make one of the other data pads give us the information we need on, you know, a way to interact with this thing, you know, or some information on it. Okay, so you know that this thing is particularly designed to maintain this forest. Why the hell this is happening, who knows? Um, but that is specifically what it is meant to do. Um, the area is known for um, very complicated weather phenomena. And so this uh, particular machine was designed so that it is most armored on its back. The underneath of it, um, there is only a very thin layer of metal and, un and past that are all of the inner workings of its many arms which that being exposed is an incredibly weak space. I will tell my metal mover to, uh, I'll tell him, dude, 
and you know i point you know actually i, I have a hologram and show him exactly where the weak metal point is and toss him the little sack of metal that i had you know work can you work with that um i could just keep it in place with move metal as well like we don't even have to hit it if if, if, you, if you're strong enough I mean, to hold I it. Keep it i could keep it in place for an hour oh yeah, yeah, yeah. great get it go for it I'm the last in initiative, though, so. <laughs> do, yeah. That is basically you have to concentrate to get there. Yeah, I mean, I, I could hold it in this place till you open the door, and then we all run in. Okay. All right. Um, uh, its turn is up um, now. Remind me, where is Drac? I'm in the water. Uh, that's why I was asking uh, if the water still like draining and going down because I'm it is still floating totally. you're and you're you're under the water well I was floating on top like you know basically staying afloat as it drained okay so, like, it, you are still to... a little you are still kind of floating there um and one of those metal columns comes whooshing at you oh, but because you're in the water I'm going to say that uh to make a speed defense will be hindered that's fine um well, the 17. A 17 is actually not enough. Um, Very good. This is going to uh, hit you and deal eight points of damage. Oh, geez. I'm down to one. <laughs> Still not impaired, though. <laughs> um, This seems like probably a good time. I will activate my health resonator. Yes. And for the next hour, it'll pulse. And basically, as long as you're within range, you're going to get an additional two uh, mic points back. Great. Wait, how often does that happen? Uh, it's up to Claire to tell me. I don't know as it lasts for an hour. Yeah. Um, so, um, so that we you could gain those points back, uh, let's say once per your turn, um, and you can do that, uh, Dean, when we get to the top of initiative again, because that'll yes. be on your turn. You can activate that cipher. Um, next, right. next, we're going to go um, to Drac. Would I have to take my? Oh, yes. Yeah, so you said the, that his um, healing thing isn't active yet, right? It's not active yet. He's gonna he's gonna do that on his turn because gotcha. it's an action to activate the cipher. So from where I am, floating down in the water. <laughs> <laughs> not really in a good place but i have pretty clear view of the thing right in the air oh yeah so what i'll do is i'll cast uh ribbons of dark matter basically on it yep um what you guys see is that the shadow shoots forward from my you know gauntlet i raise it and point it towards the, the conflict in the air shoots towards it and it starts to stretch out and break into little pieces of ribbon and start to swirl in place all around it kind of blocking its sensors or getting in the way of our arms um, and it says, for the next minute, dark matter condenses within an area within long range. There's no bigger than an immediate distance in diameter. Um, and all tasks uh, attempted by creatures in that area are hindered. Mm -hmm. And leaving the area requires the creature's entire action to move. Yes. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Yep, and uh, the way, the, especially the way I handle this particular power and this particular rule is that you do not need to make an attack roll to do this because you are targeting an area and the yep. creature is in that area. Yeah, so um, it just happens. So it just happens. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, don't tar don't target the creature, especially because it has the opportunity to leave it on its on its turn, um, and you're targeting the area. It's like yep. creating difficult terrain. Yep. Um, Coco. All right. So um, um, you had said earlier that a bunch of metal came flying at me that I dodged out of the way. Yes. I'm using that same metal. Wait, right? I'm using move metal. <laughs> and I'm gonna apply a level of effort and I'm gonna use that same metal to create a box around this um, object and hold it in place. Okay, and great. Some, it, 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 the box, I have a, a total of uh, a might pool of 10 points. Okay. If I apply an effort, would that increase the might pool? I'm okay with that. All right, so I'm up whatever one level of effort applies. So we could say 15 or 20, whatever it is. Okay, so you're applying, are you, you're playing two levels, two levels of effort. Yeah, I'll play two in, levels in total. Effort. Great. Yeah. Right. So whatever that might pool is, it would have to break that in order to move. Okay. 
And uh, you have to uh, roll to do this? Um, I mean, you're inanimate objects, you don't, but I would, I would think you would have to roll because yeah. it's. I yeah. it wouldn't yeah. want to be encased in a... This thing is being tangled up by the ribbons of darkness, which is going yeah. to hinder its ability to defend against this. You are putting in um, a level of effort to decrease the difficulty, which brings it down yet another step, and you are spending another level of effort to increase the strength of this box. Um, cool. So go ahead and uh, make me your roll. All right, I got a 10 on the roll plus the two. Perfect, that is enough. Um, so you move the, the the metal in 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 such a way that it encases this machine uh, in in this box, and um, so what what you see visually is that I'm still standing at the the you know as this river is draining I'm standing on the edge and I'm holding my staff and holding it in place as I, I you know I I give a quick shoulder glance at the party like hurry up and get this door open. So we are at top of initiative again with Solo. So health resonator, because I see, I, I I can see basically that he got smacked pretty hard. And he probably looked a little. There's wounded. definitely blood in the water coming from. That's what I'm saying. And, you probably, <laughs> and I really look at it as if you reacted uh, instinctively to defend yourself, you know, and uh, so yeah, the health resonator is going to be set off, and. Uh, like I said, it's level six, so I don't know what that is. If that whatever bonuses that might afford it or whatever, I don't know. Um, uh, for the yeah, so here's what I'll do. I'll actually say it it heals for four points of might, um, per turn. Okay, so you get four points of might back, Al. All right, cool. Yep. Right now or on my turn? Right now. Okay, fine. That's how oh. I'll rule it. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so here's what happens. Um, it is now the the constructs turn, and you hear it thrashing about inside this metal box, um, and you see dents uh, coming out uh, 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 on the side of the uh, of of this box you've encased it in. The river um, has now drained completely, and the door is actually now opening up on its own. It is not quite open yet enough to get inside. Drac, it is your turn. Well, no, while, while, oh. um, while the box is being thrashed, I am also like moving in wild, weird angles, like I was pop locking, you know. Um, if it's my turn, the water's all all gone, and I'm you know at feet level or whatever ground level. Um, Give yourself another four points for might. Oh, all right, I'll take yep. it. Yep, that's how I'm gonna do it. All right, I get another nine or two. I'm up to nine. I see that the door is not fully open, but let me see here. If I used, well, I don't have to focus on ribbons of dark matter when it's it just lasts for no, it, long, it just right? lasts. Yeah. All right. Cool. And we'll we'll do that even if it doesn't say that for now. I'll, I'll I'll rule it that way anyway. And so then I would like to use foil danger to prevent it from attacking the metal box for one turn. Okay. Like just keep it just you know more securely in there. Mm -hmm. So you see again, the, the shadows are still, you know, bits and pieces from the ribbons that are swirling around start to like attach to the robot. Um, and yeah, I'm using foil danger on it. Okay, that I'm going to ask for a roll. All right. I think it does say against a creature. Yep. Um, I don't know what the level is, but oh, I rolled a six, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I need to not roll this D20. I keep getting six. Get out of here. Maybe it worked. <laughs> but either I rolled a six. Coco, it is your turn. <laughs> um, I'm, I have to maintain this, so I'm holding it in place until these guys tell me otherwise. I can let it go. So we'll oh, go top I mean, of for my turn. I'm like, could we please hurry up? Hurry this up! I can't hold it much longer. So we'll go top of initiative again. Um, but here's the thing, uh, the, the door is about to open up fully and I'm going to offer all of you a group intrusion. Of yes. course we take it. <laughs> well, I don't know about it. I'm <laughs> it. <laughs> Give yourselves all XP as sparks fly out from the hinges of this door and it slams shut. Oh, son of a... <laughs> okay, I want to burn that XP for uh, a, a, a jack uh, for a player intrusion mm -hmm. 
and say um as the sparks start to fly um i how high did the door rise was it rising up yep it was rising up imagine like a trap door that's just opening okay so could i could i spend an xp and basically just say very speedy jack like i roll under the door you know and uh to get on the other side to see it and then that way i can try to open it from the other side you roll under the door are you going all the way inside or are you just rolling enough to like push it up i don't think i'm that strong you said it's a big metal door there's a big metal door yeah yeah i don't want to smash myself i'm gonna roll okay so you eyes. roll in and you start falling make me a speed check oh boy nice 15. 15's enough. You find yourself in a shaft um, and everything is dripping wet with water, um, but there are rungs like ladders and you are able to grab hold of it and you've you've stabilized yourself. Okay. Um, the machine uh, attempts to uh, once again thrash at this box. Um, a portion of the metal does fly off um, and you can see inside it is flailing its arms about uh, wildly. Drac. Um, from the sparks, or you know, after I see the sparks, can I examine the panels that um, Solo was pressing to see if they work anymore, or are they broken? Um, it's just like pushing buttons on a machine that doesn't have power anymore. Oh, uh, Blark. <laughs> I feel uh, audibly I say that as I'm pushing the buttons. Oh, Blark. Um, I activate Void Wings. Um, to jump back to the top alongside, um, what is it, uh, Kokan? Mm -hmm. Um, and just to be, you know, I tell him, you know, I, I look to him and I say, uh, Solo slid under the door, he's gone, door closed. And I look back at the metal, you know, console. I, 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 I go, um, I, I can't, I, I can't hold this much longer, but if I let it go, do you think you could direct it to slam directly into the door? You Ooh, have I, wings, right? I'll try. I mean, I'll, I would definitely, actually, I'll, I'm up for that idea if Claire will allow it. I, I tell you what, you can do exactly what you want if you want to do this as a player intrusion. What, what, what oh, I want to, I want to open up, sure. I want to have it, you know, because it's, it's. I want to use its momentum against it. Mm -hmm. You know, since it's like, I'll move the box as close to the door as I can and let loose the metal panels and have it, and, you know, it's going to be pushing forward. It'll slam directly into the door. And as part of my action, yeah. you just, like, dodge out the way. Well, no, yeah. are, well, are you saying for me to guide it or just to move out of No, the way? I mean, you have wings, so it, it's going to come at the first person it sees at full force. So I'm hoping you could just fly out of the way and have it hit the wall. Right, so you want me to, all right, so I'll fly back down because I flew up to you. So I'll just yeah. jump back down and do that. I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I, fly, I fly back down and I get I get my wings ready at the bottom. All right, I'll drain whatever effort uh, I can to, to make this happen. And yep. who has to spend XP for this? Both so of us here's, or... here's what we'll do. I, we, I will take, uh, basically, a player intrusion is an automatic success for you to lure the creature. Um, Al, you are going to have to still roll out of the way with a speed <laughs> check. That's yeah. fine. Um, but who's spending the XP in this situation? I'll spend the XP because I'm the one sure. actually positioning it. OK. All right. And then I'll roll if my that, If that's OK with Claire. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. And yeah. I'll definitely use one speed uh, effort to mm -hmm. get out the way. I got to drop my speed by two to six. And I'll roll it out. Come on. I rolled a 14. And then again, 14 is enough. Ooh, let's go. Yeah. So you, uh, you dodge out of the way as this machine screams forward coming out of the metal box. And it, it heads towards you. And you jump out of the way. And it collides with this metal door. Um, and it, it actually, it, it knocks the metal door off its hinges and sends it flying. Um, but you hear this unbelievable crunching sound um, as the machine has made contact with the ground and um, electricity begins arcing on its back and uh, fire bursts out. Um, and actually, uh, Solo, you down in, in, in the shaft, you might want to cover your head uh, <laughs> as, 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 as fire surges past you. Um, 
and there you are. Do we well, definitely my... <laughs> descend back to the ground after flying out of the way with my void wings. I land next to the entryway after the doors are blown off and it's safe to do so after this explosion has subsided. <laughs> You, 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 see my, you see my character do a pull up and my head comes up and go, oh, that was one way to get the door open. I also, uh, you know, I exerted almost two thirds of my intellect pool. I like slide down the edge of the, the, you know, the river edge and I just let my body just roll me to the open door. I, I reach a hand out to you and uh, see if you'll actually let me let you up this time. Or this time I actually do take your hand. <laughs> I, 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 I really need a recovery roll right now. <laughs> well, you I better mean, take your 10 minutes. Depending yeah. on how long it takes for us to go down this little yeah. ladder, you could potentially do it. But The yeah. shaft goes down for about 50 feet. Um, the ladder goes all the way down to the bottom, which is a great, but there is also a point where you can step off onto a ledge and there is a door there with a lever. Um, just so you know, um, I know everything else is going on, but now my hackles are up and my head is on a swivel and I'm looking for DP to step out of the shadows, you know, and just really attempt to you know, us do all the hard leg work and then he's going to appear and try to take whatever it is we find. So I'm just being ready for that jack off. Just, you know. <laughs> I, I got a four on my recovery roll, by the way, which is eight with the plus four. I put it all in the intellect. Um, and um, yeah, I assume once, once it's safe to do so, we start climbing down and reach this landing with the door. Um, and if y'all don't want to do it, I'll I definitely reach for it and I, I look at both of y'all before I actually pull it. Go for and it. I nod, I pull it. You pull it and you hear this hissing sound as the door opens and cold air rushes out. Uh, lining the walls of this chamber are uh, the, 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 this shimmering blue pattern. And in the center is a giant ring. Hmm. I hold the data pad up. <laughs> the numbers completely boil down to a single one. Oh. I will say, hmm. Well, boys, I think we found it. And how big is it? This is a ring of about nine feet in diameter. Ooh. A big ring. Okay, I will look around and see because if it's nine feet in diameter, I'm quite sure they must have a control module or something. And it looks thing. like it's mounted to the to the floor too. Right. So I'm going to start searching the area and see if I can find like a small version of it. Because I'm thinking there's a control module. And then this thing is used remotely using the module. So you step into the room? Yes. As soon as you step into the room, right next to the ring, a column of light shines up and it breaks into a bunch of fragments and it reforms into a roughly vaguely humanoid shape. I swear, that's Dusty Pete. And <laughs> in a very robotic kind of voice, um, you begin hearing very strange uh, 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 vowels and attempts at language before it finally shapes into place and it sounds like it's speaking um, a, a language you understand. And it says, how many of you are here? There's three of us. I, I walk forward, yeah. Okay. At this point, I've been alongside them, three. I look at him and I go, I go, as he says three, I go, I go solo, down, solitary. One moment. Yes, you are one of the remnants. Fascinating. Filed. How can I help? 
I need the lens, the astro lens, or at least the control module for it. The lens, yes. And it gestures to the ring. And um, in the middle of the ring, this um, violet light shimmers. And it begins to show you um, uh, uh, what actually looks like a city on the other side. Um, it's not like a city you've ever seen before. Um, you can see these tall spires and, and there are um, uh, carts flying in between these spires. Um. The, 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 the construct uh, gestures uh, to the ring and says, safety. I look at it, I look at my companions and I go, dudes, the astral ring isn't an object. We can travel. Correct. You can travel to safety. <sighs> Freedom? I look at the I look safety. at them like a, I look at I look at I look at you know uh Drac and uh, Coco, you want to check it out? A I fair warning. Those. You will be the first sentient creatures to cross through this in 7,300,000 rotations. 300,000 rotations. Is it safe? Sounds good. Safety. I cannot guarantee what waits on the other side. Do you mean I could break away from this illusion? A new illusion. And I step forward and step right through. <laughs> but the the Margaret Elder and his children. I'm don't gone. they deserve I'm... safety and and, and uh, escape <laughs> too? I say to at least to uh, Kokan before he steps through, or if he steps through, because the guy's already gone. You are welcome to step through. If you choose to leave, I will have to ask your secrecy. You cannot let anyone know this exists. If it's an illusion, how can it exist? And I walk right through. <laughs> I definitely have felt some kind of ways about the barger now. Um, I look at the portal. I look, I, I, I go like basically look back to where we came from, you know, knowing that the elder and the children are still there. and But they're you know, safe. I don't know. There's a lot of dead bodies in travel. <laughs> Who knows what else could be around? And then there's also Dusty Pete. I don't know what he might be doing to these guys. Like, uh, I don't go through the portal. I, I stay behind and I ponder about my friends I've met and they're on, they're on to their safety, but I want to go check on the the elder and, and his children. They, they We made a promise to them. So for the interest of time, I can I, I will tell you that you are able to get back to the elder and the children and that they are safe. And they'll like, there's no other threat to them or anything. No. And you see no sign of Dusty Pete. All right, then I would bid them farewell and join my friends. All right. So you all step through this portal and before you is this city like you have never seen before. There is nothing in the steadfast that compares. It it stretches for, for miles upon miles. Um, and if you if you look even more closely, you do see what look like humans walking around, but there are also other creatures that are incredibly tall um, and, and, and very elongated. Um, and we're reaching the end of, of our adventure for the night, but here is uh, what I will say, and then I will give you guys your final words uh, as your characters. Um, Solo, your data pad comes to life and it creates a projection of the world. You are, and it, it is a projection of the world and you can firmly see the single continent that makes up the ninth world. And there is a pulsing red light that is literally on the opposite side of the mega continent from where the steadfast and beyond are. Wait, okay. And I will now turn this over to the players for uh, your final words. Um, Koken, Coco, stands there, watches all this, and you see a slow tear 
start to develop in Okoko's eye. And he looks down and he says, I did hurt that child. It wasn't an illusion. That's it. No, all I was going to say was, um, you know, Drac looking, uh, Drac looking around. Um, and you said this is a, just a large city. Um, mm -hmm. And he would just basically see it looks, I mean, he said it looks like nothing he's ever seen before, right? So he's now his mind is racing with what could possibly be within the walls of these places. And um, he basically thinks about it for a moment and says, I'm going to find some cool stuff here. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, Solo looks, he goes, I think I'm home. I guess I don't have to be solo anymore. Welcome to a new world, my friends. You want to explore it with me? And he starts walking towards the city. I'm gonna follow. And that is our closing scene of our party walking toward this mysterious city. Um, and that concludes speed, heat, pain, and death. Um, Thank you guys so much for playing this game. This was, uh, was awesome. such such a blast uh, uh, to run this for you guys. Thank you to everyone who is still watching. It is uh, very late in the evening here on the <laughs> East Coast. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you. This was uh, this was the first um, uh, actual play here on the Infinite Construct, um, and I could not uh, have asked for a better one uh, with with a better party. You guys have you guys have been awesome. This has been really wonderful to watch you uh, role play through this and 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 go through the twists and turns that were in this ruin. Um, again, this ruin was built using the Jade Colossus ruins of the prior worlds um, in conjunction with Numenera Discovery and Destiny. Um, so these are the kinds of uh, uh, spaces you can use to start crafting interesting stories and possibilities in the ninth world. I, I mean, this was awesome. Thank you so much. And I didn't realize this was actually the first actual play. So, I, I mean, I can speak for the both of the guys. We really honored to be the, you know, the the, the first uh, players in your first actual play. So it's a true, you know, a true honor for us to actually partake in that. Absolutely. And I've said it once, I said it a thousand times. Um, I'll play with you anytime, Claire. You're more than welcome in any of our games. I know I could probably speak for the guys in that respect. And if you want us to come back and do this again, just let us know, because this was a blast. Great, great story development, engaging. You know, it was just fun. Thank you so much. And for the record, I'm not an asshole in real life. I just played one on the... <laughs> 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 it definitely was a lot of fun uh, thank you and again I didn't know I also did not know it was uh, the first actual play so it's nice being part of that little milestone for the channel so yeah thank you for having us <laughs> yeah, I, this this was my pleasure. Um, so yeah, so yeah, for those watching, uh, this will be uh, made on demand on the Infinite Construct YouTube channel in a few short days. Um, it's going to be uh, tweaked and, and prepped a bit uh, uh, to fit YouTube a little bit better. Um, so yeah, um, it is incredibly late, um, and there will be more actual plays uh, here on the Infinite Construct. Uh, this is the beginning, and you guys with these characters and this party, if you want. Um, we may revisit to see what's going on or we could do something entirely new um uh that is that is that so um yeah it's really late i'm quite tired <laughs> so i'm going to bid you guys farewell and of course everyone who is watching thank you for following thank you for watching uh and definitely look forward to a lot more a lot more numenera a lot more adventures into the ninth world um there's there's, there's so much more to come um so with that good night everyone Bye, guys. Good night. See you later. <laughs>